start music. Uh, this is MXUX. Quick, quick uh, video here on uh, why rear axles matter. Why the Endurance has an advantage over every other uh, EV pickup. Also, some interesting uh, to dos on uh, institutional and insider stock activity. Thanks for watching. All right, this is a clip. Uh, I don't want to get uh, flagged for this. Sandy Monroe, a uh, student of Dr. Deming, the father of modern manufacturing, statistical quality control, X bar, R bar charts, really created modern manufacturing, and this is his top disciple here. Uh, anyway, uh, he's he's comparing the Cybertruck with the, the Ram and the F-150, and he's going over uh, a lot of things in this particular video. At this point, he's got to the rear suspension. And I keep talking about the solid axle in the, um, in the uh, Lordstown Endurance. And it is the only EV pickup truck right now that has a solid rear axle. The Cybertruck, the Rivian, none of them have a solid rear axle. Uh, the Ford F-150 does not have a solid rear axle. And um, I think this is going to give uh, the endurance an edge for people that uh, are looking at doing, uh, you know, uh, towing and uh, for um, applications, industrial or fleet applications, where towing is, is kind of important and perhaps even handling... Uh, more weight loads i am suspicious of independent suspension for weight but certainly for towing now i've been saying this and i think i don't know if anybody believes me but let's hear what uh uh, uh mr deming dr deming's disciple here uh, monroe has to say now this he's making a comment about the independent rear suspension the airbag suspension that's going to be on the uh, cyber truck in relation to towing okay well the ram's got that already and uh, quite frankly that gives a phenomenal ride uh, that's why they won uh, talking about the vehicle of the year and now we look at active damping well the raptor and the sierra both have that already it's adaptable, I assume, to other okay, we vehicles. Don't, we don't care but the about cost this. Is uh, kind of significant. All right. Then what we got to do is we got to look at the solid axle. The All solid right. axle is present in every one of these trucks, and the reason for that is for towing. That uh, keeps the truck stable. It doesn't have a tendency to want to crawl or walk. There's no solid axle on the uh, cyber truck, so to me, anyways, that's going to be some sort, some sort of a little bit of an issue. Something that they're going to have to try and overcome. I don't know how or why or how much extra cost that's going to add, but, but a solid axle does give you the capability for towing. It's a little better for towing. So I want to, at this juncture... Okay. I don't know if I can replay that. ...on the uh, Cybertruck. So to me, anyways, that's going to be some sort, some sort of a little bit of an issue, something that they're going to have to try and overcome. I don't know how or why or how much extra cost that's going to add, but, but a solid axle does give you the capability for towing. It's a little better for towing. So, yeah, he's understating it there, but the fact that he even mentioned it, and he indicated that all the other uh, pickup trucks that uh, he was talking about here have a solid axle, and he's talking about how independent rear suspension will walk or crawl. Now, Ford and the other companies say that they have this independent suspension thing worked out. I think it remains to be seen. We don't know. I think uh, that people in fleet applications and people that are normal human beings that do towing are going to be skeptical of the independent rear suspension. And I think this is a real edge for uh, the endurance. This, I wanted to just show you this, and then I'm going to cut to another one. When I am talking about a solid rear axle, this is one of the best examples I have found. This is the endurance rear axle setup. And you say, that's old-fashioned. This is what works for towing and loads, okay? 
Now the endurance is not going to have the pumpkin here. It's not going to have the differential, but it's going to have the solid axle. And where these drum brakes are, Envision those as Ilafi uh, motors, hub motors. So forget this exists. Put this solid metal bar. Well, this is actually hollow. It's got drive shafts in it. But the point is, in the endurance, this is going to be a solid metal axle, leaf springs. This is the setup for towing and load hauling that's been used in pickups for many, you know, since inception. The, the, the independent suspension they're putting in is the independent suspension from the Suburban, okay? That Suburban-like, and I don't know what the other models are. But those are great trucks and everything, but they're not pickup trucks. They're not really trucks. Anyway, I'm going to show you um, another clip here in a second, okay? Okay, these are the same guys. Uh, and this is an independent, this is their independent suspension, which they have upgraded. These guys do fantastic work, I'll tell you what. But anyway, this is what's going to replace that other axle. And uh, you can see this is a beam that connects it to the uh, body or the frame as it would be. This is a differential. You got upper, lower control arms. You got uh, arms that uh, connect to the front uh, that uh, stop the roll. You got shock absorbers. So you can see how much more complex this is. Now, if you imagine an electric motor being in the place of this pumpkin here, this differential, uh, this is the Ford design. And... Uh, and this is going to be even lower in the Ford design than this would be in this regular design. But you can see here, you know, the number of connection points, the different, you know, you know, different joints and so forth. And the number of parts that can go wrong and that need to be serviced are so much higher. And I would add in the in the Ford, they have an electric motor. They have a mechanical differential which is electronically controlled. So, could you get more complex? It's, can, you, can you see the error codes flashing now? Anyway, the point is, uh, this is what they've had to do uh, because they can't use hub motors. Uh, and um, again, um, this is going to place the uh, the motor in the F-150 very low. And I think this is going to cause people in fleets especially to think twice about all these, uh, you know, all these parts and these joints. And, and by the way, all you, um, all you guys that like to lift your trucks, you are limited. You, you, you really can't lift the truck that has this on it, okay? I'm sure somebody will figure a workaround, but right now you really can't lift the truck that has this on it. And I would add, when you look at all of this and getting to this motor and, and getting to the seals on this electric motor here or servicing this uh, differential mechanical, electronically controlled mechanical differential and the gearing that's the reduction gearing that's in the motor and all the rest of this stuff, the amount of man hours it's going to take to get to that. The Alafi wheel motor... I was just reading some specs on it. It can be removed by one person in five minutes with hand tools. The entire motor. <laughs> okay, so think about it. Five minutes, hand tools, take the motor out. Here's your Ford F-150. You know, not that these motors go bad, but you know, seals go bad, other things go bad. You know what I mean? Uh, and this thing is going to have a bash plate under it in a Ford F-150. Anyway, I think the Endurance is a far superior design for towing, and I think it's a superior design for a simplification. Now, the Rivian is going to have this cut in half, okay? And they're going to have one motor powering one side and one motor powering the other side, but it's going to be this, the similar setup. The same complications and uh, drive shafts and so forth. Uh, which the uh, endurance totally eliminates. And, you know, I think it makes perfect sense. And it's 
quantum leap, leap forward in manufacturing and uh, automobile design. All right. Okay. This is a, a... I'm a big moose test guy, the moose test. You can look at my other videos on the moose test to having to do with uh, other vehicles. The moose test is basically mimics... Uh, having a car jog in and out of lanes to avoid a collision. Uh, Proteon is another hub motor manufacturer. Uh, they uh, have been around for a long time as well. I do believe Elafi's design is a generation ahead of the Proteon design. I think it's a bit more powerful. They have a very interesting design for a, a swiveled a hub motor uh, application that allows a car to go sideways and so forth. I think it might be a little lower speed. Uh, I just want to steal a uh, 10 seconds or so of their video here. Uh, they do a really good job of demonstrating how uh, how hub motors can help with handling, and I think this is another key a safety issue for uh, uh, the uh, endurance that's going to be a plus for fleet managers. So. I'm going to play this here. Now they show the vehicle go around. Okay. Now they're showing like a normal vehicle would uh, just have the same speed on the, all the wheels here. Now uh, uh, this is a hub motor vehicle. Now do you see how the uh, speeds change on the individual wheels? This this is the key to the advantage of the hub motors, uh, and it works. Uh, I'm not going to play any more of this video. The point is. Those speeds change in an effort to uh, help the car. If we look here, again, this car is vectoring around this uh, truck. These inside motors are running at 38 miles an hour, and these outside motors are running at 10 miles an hour. That enables a very nimble movement. And this is all computer controlled um, by the, the, it's not anything the driver has to think about. And Proteon has done a very good job of showing this here, and it's a great product. And I plan on actually doing a video about their, uh, their product as well at a later date. But anyway, just to show you how much safer uh, the endurance can be uh, for a fleet user. Uh, that was the goal here, and and again, I'm a big moose test guy, and this is the moose test right here, and this is just a fantastic thing that's going to allow this truck uh, and any hub motor uh, equipped truck, with even one with Proteon motors as well, uh, although I do not believe they're at that state yet, although they may be. I'm, I'm not going to slam them. I, 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 I'm big on this company. Uh, they... Uh, uh, also uh, allow this thing to move quickly and nimbly amazing this is f1 uh, sports car uh, technology and this is going to enable the safest I, I think one of the safest moose tests ever and uh, anyway another big plus for the endurance that these other trucks don't have now the rivian has four motors okay they are connected by a whole bunch of stuff, uh, CV joints, UV, you know, you name it, okay? This, having the wheels in motor is going to be able to react, I am sure, many milliseconds quicker and make it that much safer. And I think it's a far superior design with less moving parts. Anyway, I think that's another real big plus for the uh, endurance. Okay, this is MXUX. Um, just going to start with the Lordstown chart here. As you can see, we are, well, we were outside the Bollinger Bands. Now we're back inside, so indicates we're not going to drop anymore. We're right there. I don't know what's that's a 50 day moving average. I'm not sure, but we're right on it. So there you go. That's the stock. What are we? 991, 990. I believe uh, some tech guy on um, MSNBC said that 10.07 was resistance 
so we're very close. Um, I just want to uh, go through, first of all, institutional holdings. Now, you know, we're facing this funding thing. There's 21% institutional holdings on, um, on RIDE. There's 177 million shares outstanding, and 21% 20, of that is uh, institutional. Now, here we go. We got uh, increased positions. Now, this, this, this data is not totally up to date. Um, it's dated by the, the see, we got 3, 3, 3, 31, 21, okay. So it's a month or two off, but it's the best I can do for right now. I don't have any special reports or anything. Maybe some of you can do that. I can't. Anyway, um, increased positions, 144, decreased 66, held 19, and uh, total institutional shares are uh, 37 million. There's 177 million outstanding. Um, so the institutional ownership is 21%. Anyway, um we'll just get an idea uh, black rock they they're in everything um schwab some of these are uh index funds let's see the new uh, uh new ones um we're just going to go through the first page here nothing too exciting there let's see increased uh vanguard okay black rock is up Added 10% more shares. They got a million shares, million eight, according to this, a couple months old. Um, Citadel, very interesting. Okay. Uh, what is that? Six, 1,600%. Change in shares. They added uh, 58. They owned 500. They owned... Uh, 600,000. So that's that's quite a big deal. Um, anyway, um, let's see the next page here. Goldman Sachs has increased uh, 120, 25%, let's say. They get two, 250,000 shares. Wells Fargo. Okay, you get my drift. That's who's increased. Let's see who decreased. Um, retirement union, we can understand that. Uh, pension fund. Um, I don't recognize any of these other ones. Citigroup, okay. Not a very big position. Uh, they still hold some uh they dropped quite a bit there so they dropped 82 percent um let's just see the activity and again uh, we got black rock here they're in everything but still and um let's see who sold out oops sorry let's see who sold out here all right now let's see who sold out. Uh, I don't see anybody. I don't know if Capstone. I, I don't, I don't see any big. Okay, Kempner sold out a million shares there. That's a biggie. Um, who else? I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know Kempner. Kempner. Holocene, don't know that. They sold out a million. Luxor uh, sold out a million. We got some, some exits here. And UB, uh, UBS O'Connor sold out a million. So, anyway, uh, the point is uh, there's still a lot of healthy uh, interest, although, again, this is some weeks old. Just to give you an idea of the uh, institutional ownership, that may have changed. They publish these on a, I don't know if it's a 10K or whatever. Uh, 
so there's 68 new holders according to this and um uh the numbers that increase sales 114 increase sale uh hold uh, shares and 66 decrease so you know 42 sold out kind of a mixed bag more increases uh, and again this is a bit old let's just go and see the short interest the short interest is what uh, the short interest is uh, 32 so that's about six times the average daily volume uh out of uh, 177 what I don't, I don't know what the percentage of that is i think it's less than 20 percent uh let's see i don't have a calculator handy well the short interest is definitely going up okay as you can see the vultures are circling here and uh Oh, there you go. Now, what I really want to cover here is uh, insider uh, insider activity. Um, these are insider trades, and number of open market buys were ten, number of sells were eleven, so pretty pretty evenly split. Forty six million bought, one million sold, forty eight million traded. Now. Darren Post, he's selling a lot. He's exercising options. He's selling out. He's uh, building his uh, his uh, cash position here. He's the head of VP Engineering. Uh, this is the CFO. Again, he's selling out. Not not too man. This is not too massive. This is not too massive. Phil Schmidt, fifty seven. Uh, 50,000 shares, exercise some options. He's the president, uh, head of manufacturing. This is a tech guy. He's got 100,000 that he sold. Uh, another officer executing options. Okay, Schmidt again, 161,000. I think that might be the same ones he... Uh, well, I don't know if that's the ones he executed. Uh, Phil Schmidt, again, these guys are selling, okay? And uh, a lot of sales. Now, I want to I want to go to the, and, you know, I don't necessarily, I mean, you know, you don't want insiders to sell, but this is a pre-revenue startup. And, you know, these guys have homes to pay for and other things. And, you know, they are getting paid, but... It, you know, I can understand them exercising options to build a bankroll. You know, it's just prudent. Uh, but, um, again, if they're acting on some kind of inside information, that's a different thing. Uh, I think it's a toss-up. I'm not, for some reason, concerned about it. Because, if you look here... Um, Shares traded. Okay, okay, you got acquisitions. These are people buying. Okay. Um, Rodriguez. Okay, non open market. I don't know if you bought. I, I, I'm not big on financials. You guys can figure this out. Anyway, again, uh, 200,000, 160, 172,000. This is the one. Stephen Burns, CEO, acquisition. 32 million shares. And then again, Stephen Burns, uh, acquisition, 13 million. Now, I uh, did a percentage on this earlier. I can't call up the calculator. I think it's like 37%. The stock, something like that, over 30%. And uh, in addition to whatever he holds and whatever options he holds, so, uh, Steve Burns evidently knows something we don't know, or something. And then you got a, a director here. He bought two million. Uh, okay. Well, you got another director here. Sold a million. But I mean, 
these are uh, these are big numbers. So perhaps Steve Burns is trying to get a controlling interest in the company, or I think it's interesting. I think it's a positive sign. I mean, let's face it: when you're buying that big of a percentage of the company, it's a la uh, Elon Musk. Okay, and uh, I think that's all I wanted to go over. We covered the short institutional. Okay. All right. Pretty interesting, huh, guys? Steve Burns getting up to their uh, plus 30% in this buy, including what, what he already held and what options he has. So, you know. All right. Hi, this is MXUX. I hope you liked the video. Just real quickly, um, not sure what to make of the insider stock activity. I don't know if that stock was awarded to Burns, perhaps to keep him there. I think uh, in any case, he's going to own about 40%, I don't know, quite, quite a large percentage of the uh, company. And uh, those insider transactions, I want to make a note, they're not up to date because they don't, they don't publish the up to date, up to date there. I don't have access to that, but it just shows you there's a pretty healthy, or was a pretty healthy uh, institutional uh, interest. So I think the insider, uh, insider uh, Steve Burns information is really quite interesting, and I think uh, that the uh, the evidence on the solid rear asshole is indisputable. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.